people who restore cars often start with something they call barn finds, and then spend weeks and months working on it and putting their heart and soul into it. So can you imagine a story where a person restoring a barn find gets increasingly more obsessed with it over time? Supernatural stories based on the most unusual topics have been the forte of novelist Stephen King. And when it's the 80s, and you get John Carpenter to film it, you're in for a treat. Christine is the story of a supernatural red 1958 Plymouth Fury found by Arnie Cunningham, who starts restoring her, and all those who bullied him in high school soon begin to meet an untimely end. And part of the charm of this movie is that when this car goes on a rampage against the townsfolk, its windows are tinted black. So, you never know if the car really was haunted by a spirit called Christine, or if it was Arnie behind the wheel the whole time. I mean, the self-repair scenes do put an end to that speculation, and it is very much a cliched 80s supernatural movie. But the innuendo of everything having been a product of Arnie's imagination, and him just getting better at restoring any damage on his car and becoming more obsessed with the car over time till he forgets what he's doing, is a theme I would have gone with as a director. Now, because this is such a famous movie car, it has been made in many different scales by many different manufacturers. However, because the 58 Plymouth Fury is such a distinctively 50s car with the huge tail fins and everything, combined with the candy red, or I should say Toreador red, and the black tinted windows, I feel like in bigger scales, even in just the next bigger scale, which is 143, the detail level doesn't improve all that much. But because it gets bigger, the car ends up looking more like a toy car, while in 164, it is small enough for its exterior features to still pass for the real thing, if you know what I mean. And in certain scales, like 124, the wheels are way too big. But with that being said, the 118 version is really good looking in terms of accuracy. It's even got functional headlamps and carpeting, so if you're a big fan of the movie, those 150 bucks or so that it goes for today are a good investment. I personally am not a huge fan of the 58 Plymouth Fury, so I just got this $10 164 replica, and for what it's worth, even at this scale, even for those who are unfamiliar with the movie, it is still an eye-catcher in any 164 collection. Now, even in 164 scale, four different companies have made the Christine Plymouth Fury, namely Greenlight, Hot Wheels, Johnny Lightning, and Auto World. And this video would be too long if I tried comparing all of them. But someone else, a channel called Joe Motor 49, has already made a comparison between the Auto World and the Hot Wheels, with the Auto World easily coming out on top. So I'll put a link in the description if you want to watch his comparison video. In my video, I'll review this green light while telling you about the differences it has to the Auto World. And the Johnny Lightning is basically the auto world, but without side window glass and with wheels that look like they're a bit too big for the car, just like on the Hot Wheels. So let's start with the card, which looks absolutely amazing. I feel bad that I'm about to crack open the model for you guys, because you could just hang this on your wall and it would look good. It also looks better than the auto world packaging, which only shows one half of Christine with the light turned on, but here, you get the full view. And I also like how simple it is, just showing you the movie logo and the car, while on their packaging, Auto World repeatedly advertise on the back of their card how every aspect of their model is exactly 164 scale. It's funny, because I couldn't find the dimensions of the 1958 Plymouth Fury on Wikipedia, and I didn't feel like doing a proper Google search. But on Wikipedia, the 58 Fury has a wheelbase of 118 inches. And if you divide that by 64, you'll get 1.84 inches. And I measured this green light's wheelbase, and it's exactly 1.84 or 1.85 something inches. So it's definitely as close to 164 as you can get. Okay. Show me.
So taking a look at the front of the 164 1958 Plymouth Fury by Greenlight, you can see that the front actually looks pretty solid. Um, I guess you can say that the headlights look a bit too simple, but we'll get to that in a moment. Let's first talk about the front grille. I think that Greenlight did an absolutely solid job on this front grille. With the exception of the printing on the extreme left and on the extreme right of the grille being slightly wonky, the rest of the grille looks solid, and on the Auto World version, the grille only has the horizontal bars, but the vertical ones are missing. Here on the Greenlight version, the vertical bars are there, but they're a bit too thick, because if you look at the pic of the real Christine on the card, you'll see that the vertical bars are a lot thinner than the horizontal slats. So the real car's grille is somewhere between Greenlight and Auto World's way of presenting it. The headlights are sort of simple. I mean, they're just painted on and don't have any texture. They're also pretty convex, sort of popping out. The Auto World makes them a bit flatter and more recessed and gives them a frame. Because if you look at the real picture, you can see the 58 Plymouth Fury's headlights have that thick frame that surrounds them. So that is missing on the green light. However, pay attention to the silver trim above the headlights. You'll see on the real car that this is part of the upper edge trim of the chrome grille, and it wraps around the top of the headlights, and all of that is missing on the Auto World version, where it's just body colored red. But on the other hand, the Plymouth nameplate here is just painted on, but on the Auto World, it's slightly raised. Also, behind the headlights, the 56 Fury has fins, and here on the green light, they're barely raised and just painted silver. Not much emphasis is put on them, but on the Auto World casting, they're much more pronounced and even have that little shark fin type of edge at the center. But the biggest advantage of the Auto World Christine compared to the Greenlight Christine is that the hood opens on the Auto World, while it doesn't on the Greenlight. That's probably the reason why the Auto World Christine is either sold at a higher price or harder to find than the Greenlight Christine. So if you haven't gotten one yet, definitely get the Auto World instead of this Greenlight. I mean, the Auto World also comes with its own little 164 hard plastic display case. So why wouldn't you go for it? Unless you can't find it, then of course the green light is still a good-looking replica. Although another advantage the green light has going for it is its color. This is the proper shade of red, while the Auto World uses a dark red. So for some people, that might be the most important detail that has to look right, rather than the fine detailing. So in that case, the green light would certainly be a better choice over the Auto World. I also like how here on the green light, the windshield wipers are more emphasized by being placed on the black windshield itself, while the Auto World places them on the hood. Some people may not like it. Those people might want the wipers to be more discreetly placed, but I like them being emphasized more. Now, tire width. On the Auto World Christine, the tires are very thin, while on the Hot Wheels Christine, they are way too thick. But on this green light, Christine, I feel like they got it just right. We also have a California license plate that says CQB241, which is the exact same plate as in the movie. Green light always makes sure to get that right. One thing I don't like about green light's rendition of Christine is that the front bumper is slanted downwards. Like... I have no idea why they did it this way, because it's straight on the real car, and Auto World made it straight on their casting. So I guess once you find out about that, you kind of get upset, and the longer you stare at it, the worse you feel about it. But if you view this car head-on, it's not really noticeable, and from the usual viewing angle, it'll only look weird once you're made aware of it. Only from the side, it's immediately noticeable. And this problem also exists on Greenlight's 143 version of Christine, so not sure why they chose to angle the front bumper that way. But for the record, Hot Wheels also made it slope downward. 
What I do like about the green light Christine's front bumper, though, is that it is made out of chrome, while the Autoworld Christine's front bumper is just matte silver. Same thing regarding the wheels. The wheels are chrome on the green light and Hot Wheels, but matte silver on the Autoworld and Johnny Lightning. And on the real car, they are chrome. But on the Hot Wheels and Johnny Lightning, I feel they are too big. But on this green light and auto world, the wheel covers seem to be the right size. One further issue on this 164 green light is that the A pillar is a bit too thick and too short. I think the auto world has more realistic proportions here. The entire canopy of the car is a bit flat on this model. The proportions are better on the auto world. Another thing that the Auto World has going for it, which this green light doesn't, is that the black paint is actually a really heavy tint on the Auto World, to the point where if you shine a flashlight from the other side, you would actually be able to still see the steering wheel and the interior, whereas the green light is just black paint, so there's absolutely nothing visible in terms of the interior. In terms of the actual shape of the wheel covers, neither green light nor Auto World managed to get it perfectly right. Auto World manages to make the wheel cover's center dish protrude, while here on the green light it feels recessed compared to the surrounding edge, which is wrong. So here on the green light, the center of the wheel cover is recessed, but it is shaped like a cone in that it slopes forward to a pointy bit, which is accurate to the real Christine's wheel covers, while the Auto World's wheel cover dishes are rather flat. But overall, I still prefer the Auto World's wheel cover shape to the green lights. But I'd say the green light comes a close second. The Johnny Lightning is even more out of whack, and the Hot Wheels is completely forgettable. So taking a look at the back of the 164 scale 1958 Plymouth Fury by Greenlight, the back also looks pretty interesting of this 50s era car. I actually feel like the taillights of this green light look a tiny bit better than the taillights of the auto world, because the lights themselves are quite visible here. They're nice and round and have a thin chrome frame, but on the auto world, they're kind of recessed and look more like holes than like red taillights. You can see we have the Plymouth script on the trunk lid, so that is scale accurate and looks nice. And below that we have a small silver trunk lock, and below that we have the yellow California plates. Again, chrome rear bumper looks really nice compared to Auto World's matte silver rear bumper. However, one thing you will notice is that the exhaust pipes are missing on the green light. Not sure if the Auto World has them or not. And taking a look at the bottom of the car, you can see that uh, we have a basic level of detail here. It says green light right down there, copyright 2018, made in China, mine is car number 137, I think. And then up here we have some legal information, and that's about it. Oh, here are the exhaust pipes, barely visible. Look at that. And for size comparison, to give you a perspective of how big this 58 Plymouth is, I have here another red car, a Honda S2000, and I mean, look at this. This looks like a 176 scale car, but it's not. It's a true 164 scale made by Mini GT, and this is also a 164 scale I'll be reviewing someday in the future, but it just goes to show how these Plymouths were land barges, even back in old 1958. So I hope you guys liked my review of the 164 1958 Plymouth Fury Christine. And if you're interested in more 164 scale cars, I have done a couple of other reviews here. So make sure to watch them. Have a nice day. And this is Imperial Diecast, signing out.